My God, my God, why have you left me? You seem too far away to save me, too far to hear my cries for help. My God, my God, I kept calling by day and I was not silent at night. But you did not answer me. I feel like a worm, less than human. People insult me and look down on me. Everyone who sees me makes fun of me. They shake their heads and stick out their tongues at me. Oh God, they say, call to the Lord for help. Maybe he will save you if he likes you so much. Surely he will rescue you. So don't leave me. Trouble is near, and there is no one to help me. My strength is gone like water poured out on the ground. My bones have separated. My courage is gone. My mouth is as dry as a piece of pottery. My tongue is sticking to the roof of my mouth. You have left me dying in the dust. Dogs are all around me. A pack of evil people has me trapped. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can see each one of my bones. My enemies are looking at me. They just keep staring. They divide my clothes among themselves. They throw lots for what I am wearing. Lord, don't leave me. You are my strength. Hurry and help me. My God, my God, why have you left me? Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivering, is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion that you've come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you didn't arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. Would you please stand and sing together? How deep the Father's 
Trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God, my Savior.
please take your seats. soldiers led Jesus away into the palace. That is the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Would you please stand and sing again? Defeat 
The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive.
was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you're going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. You can save others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the king of of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. They crucified him. They crucified with him also. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima shabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, He said, surely this man was the son of God. Would you please stand with us again and sing. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the Thank you for the name. 
Please be seated. You know, the week that led to what we know as Good Friday started off so well, so well. It started back on Sunday, which we call Palm Sunday, where it was like a political demonstration. Jesus comes riding in as the warrior king messiah who's going to take out the oppressors, take out the mockers, and finally the Jews were going to get what was deserved for them. Then on Monday, it got better, and he went into the temple, and he kind of cleaned house, and he turned over tables, and, and kicked out the money changers, and he, uh, he attacked and, and, and kind of called out the elite temple leaders by calling them a den of thieves for creating more barriers between his father in heaven and the people. Then on Tuesday, it just got better. He went back again, and he and got even more harsh and more critical of those temple leaders and just kind of tore shreds off of them of what they were doing in the name of Yahweh. Then on Wednesday, a, an unnamed woman anoints him as the true Messiah, which at that point, Judas, who later on betrays Jesus, says, I've had enough. I'm, I'm out. And he joins the conspiracy. But then on Thursday, they have that meal, and all the disciples are gathered around Jesus, and, and they're going, finally, it's happening. Finally, it's happening. And Jesus says, my sacrifice will, will destroy the temple system as you know it, and you'll see the kingdom of God fully enacted. Everything was going so well. And then on early Friday morning, what we call Good Friday, Jesus was abducted. It wasn't an arrest. It was an abduction. And he was tried. And then that afternoon, by the end of the afternoon, he was dead, hanging on a cross. It all started so well. And if you were back then coming into Jerusalem for uh, Passover on that weekend, coming in on that Friday, so excited because you heard the Messiah was there. Again, he was going to tell stories, life-changing stories. He was going to say something that was going to go right to your heart. He was going to um, mock and tear sheds, uh, shreds and kind of little jabs at the temple elite because they knew how corrupt they were. But as you came into town, you would notice it's a little darker than normal at this time of day. And then you would hear about what happened and you would see the cross and you would see Jesus hanging there. What happened? You know, Jesus came announcing the kingdom of God. He was going to take out the oppressors. He was going to take out the mockers. And, and well, why? Why did they kill him? Now, if you've grown up in church, you know we were told that Jesus died for our sins, which is true. He died so that we can have our sins paid for. No his heavenly father as our lord as our savior as our father and be with him for all of eternity personal salvation that's not why he was killed he was killed because he claimed to be a king he claimed to be a king that threatened the powers that be he was killed for something that yes changes our eternal life but it changes our today life every day it changes our daily life if you call him king See, three years earlier, Jesus came, and the very first time he spoke in public, he announced that the kingdom of God was near. He talked about the kingdom of God 100 times throughout the New Testament. When he talked about salvation 10 times, when he talked about church like three times, he never talked about Taylor Swift. He just talked about the kingdom of God because people were confused about the kingdom of God. So he started to define it to help them understand because they had this idea of a warrior king that was going to take out the oppressors. And he had to explain that this kingdom of God was different. So he would say the kingdom of God is like. It's like this. It's like that. It's like a seed. It's small and it's planted and it's subversive. It's hidden. It's underground. And as it germinates and spreads out, eventually it blooms and people see the outcome of this kingdom of God that was quietly growing all around us. He says the kingdom of God is for children. He says don't get in the way of children for the kingdom of God is for them. He said the kingdom of God is, is like a servant. That if you want to be great amongst each other, you serve one another. He says the Messiah, the, the Son of God, did not come to be served but to serve others, to give his life as a ransom for many. The kingdom of God is like nothing that you assume or have ever thought it would be. 
so different from our world. Our world where our kingdoms work on politics and power and persuasion, where the global kingdoms work on attack and coercion and, and threats and domination, which we seem to adopt and deal with it personally as well, and relationships and fights and things that we don't like. But Jesus came and he showed a contrast, his whole time on this planet, a contrast between the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world. And then on Good Friday, these kingdoms collided with a huge crash because Jesus was starting a true revolution. And he paid a huge price for it. The verse we heard read earlier when he talks about that before he was scourged with the uh, whip of nine tails and sh uh, flesh shredded off his back, before he was crucified, he was handed over to the entire Roman regiment. We see in the movies where he was beaten by five or six guys and had his beard ripped apart. But the entire regiment of the Roman Empire, that was 600 people. 600 soldiers were let loose on Jesus to pound him and pummel him and to take out all their frustrations on this little minor group called the Jews. Just enough to not kill him, because if they killed him, they would be killed, but enough to punish him before he was punished, again, before he was crucified. He paid a huge price for this kingdom of God to be empowered. And to his last breath, he showed us what the kingdom of God is like. We read that in his last breath, as he died, the, the curtain of the Holy of Holies that separated people from the location of God, of Yahweh, the Holy of Holies. The curtain was torn from the top to the bottom, from God down to us, ripped apart so there would no longer be a barrier between us and God. And the first person that walked across that threshold and into the kingdom of God was not another Jew, was not another disciple. It was a Roman centurion. The centurion that was uh, to witness every execution that happened on that cross. Hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of deaths he watched. And as he stood there, and as he, he watched Jesus die in his final breath, he hears Jesus say, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. And he says, surely, surely this is the Son of God. And he says, this is the king I will serve. See, the question that Good Friday asks of all of us every year, it's a reminder, it's a, it's a prod, it's a poke, it's a, it's a motivation, it's a catalyst. Is who's your king? Who's your king? And what kingdom will you serve? And if you want to answer that, the answer is in our actions and in our reactions to stuff that happens in our lives. Do we respond with kindness and love and service and generosity? Because those are the tools, those are the whip it, weapons of God's kingdom here on earth. Or do we respond with power and attacks and threats? Because that's the kingdom of the earth that will not last. Jesus asks very, very little of us for those people who do not call him king. But he asks everything from us for those of us who do call him king. On Good Friday, it looked like the king was dead, that the Messiah failed. But in actuality, the kingdom of God was empowered. Because in a few days, they would see how this would happen. Because it's only Friday right now. But Sunday, it's coming. My God, my God, you are the Holy One. Our ancestors trusted you. Yes, they trusted you and you saved them. My God, the truth is you are the one who brought me into this world. You have been my God since the day I was born. You do not ignore those who need help. You do not hate them. You do not turn away from them. You listen 
when they cry for help, my God, the Lord is king. He rules all nations. Those who are not yet born will be told about him. Each generation will tell their children about the good things the Lord has done. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, He has done it! It is done, it is finished, Christ has won, he is risen, grace is here, love has triumphed. God, it's amazing the love you show for us through what happened, not just during that week leading to Good Friday, but what happened on that day, the things that God stood for, the things that you show is important to us through your son, Jesus. Help us every day to make that decision that you are king, Jesus, that we live in such a way that reflects your kingdom and the way we respond and react and live, that we use the weapons of your kingdom of love and mercy and justice and kindness and goodness and generosity and service to change the world around us because you've empowered us to do that. Thank you that we have this weekend now to reflect on that, to think about that, and then to celebrate that on Sunday. And I pray that you will be with us as we do that together. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you all for being here with us. Our cafe is open if you want to grab a little bite to eat and some coffee. We have this wonderful display of artwork out front that will be even more so tomorrow during the art cafe. But if you want to get your phones out, the station's of the resurrection, the little QR code, are, it's quite moving if you like to start that process of doing that journey of Jesus after the resurrection, because that's how we live today. So God bless you all. There's some reminders on the round table what's happening for the rest of the weekend. Have a wonderful, holy weekend together. Remember that Jesus is Lord. God bless you and see you later.